It turns out that you can't use a electronic wastegate. I'm upgrading them to these. Wow. <laughs> you know, it's like wow instead of wow. So what's the differences between great big turbocharged SMX and a great big procharged SMX? Hey, you're at Steve Morris Engines. Now, we have been showing you the uh, just getting started on the single 144 millimeter turbo and uh, on SMX for Jason Ware out of England. Jason's putting this in, at, believe it or not, a Fox Body Mustang. So, in England, Fox Body Mustang, drag and drive is what he wants this on, and this is on E85. So, non-intercooled E85. Uh, I'm not 100% sure if he's gonna run it on an intercooler there or not. Um, and if we can get time or try to figure it out, I might try to do this on methanol also. Um, but uh, I've already been running it some and having a couple little struggles with dyno control and how the big, great big single like this is operating compared to the dyno. So we'll see um, when we get there. Uh, but you can see fuel tech so smx fully water jacketed uh, these are the high impedance fuel tech injectors and these are quite nice actually so far um i'm they're quite a bit big you know for how small an injector are that is uh at 75 pounds i think this is 280 pounds per something like that so um really pretty cool and will be a really nice driver on uh, regular gasoline for the, the street crews portion that he needs to do. He could run on gasoline, he could do a lot of stuff, or anybody could do a lot of stuff. I'm thinking about these little injectors myself, uh, a little high impedance injector, instead of the great big injector that I ha have for uh, street drive. So I might actually change that over. I might talk to uh, uh, Fuel Tech about that. Um, so that's pretty cool. 540 cubic inch, 144 millimeter turbo. Everything is our common package right here for our SMX. And uh, just a really nice piece. Now this is, the one thing that we did do is we don't have Jason's hot side or cold side. So this is all stuff that we just made up. Now this is my uh, twin turbo, uh, twin turbo kit. So normally there's a turbo right there. So we built an extension pipe and basically a billet Y pipe here in order to test all this. And then, but normally there'd be a turbo here, a turbo there. And we can put the turbos backwards and the turbo would be in the back of the car, like down by the firewall. So that's how this would normally go. So we built all this just for the sake of dynoing uh, this engine. Now, uh, you know, it's not uh, ultimately important to have the perfect tune because what the perfect tune does here on the dyno is not all that relevant to the car. Um, so the car, I mean, it gets us a good safe fuel curve, a good safe timing curve, but I already have all that stuff figured out. Really, I'm just verifying that the engine is nice and is right. So we're gonna, and I'm probably giving you a little bit more information on what you need because we're gonna start dynoing this and I'll show you where I'm struggling right now. So we'll just kind of see how it goes. Still didn't make any boost, so something must be wrong in the boost controller. So that was just going to be a real low, just the first initial no. non wastegate. That's the same horsepower made on wastegate before, basically, which is five pounds uh, lower RPM, no tune up. But um, let's see what it did because obviously it didn't it's still plugged in, isn't it? Yeah, all right. So this made a big fat 
five psi uh, right there. Actually, it made less than that. Oh, here we go. Yeah, big fat, 4.89 pounds of boost, uh, low RPM. So let's see here. Yeah. Don't need anything. Group seven. Yeah, this red, this red line right here is your boost. So obviously, it's not doing anything. So tune-up is no timing whatsoever. This has boost timing. So if what I like to do and what I do in my car is I run a flat timing curve. There is there is no timing curve. It is just flat. This is the max timing I ever want to have in the engine. And so what I do is I control timing with my... Uh, in the time-based... or time-based... Uh, timing control so I'm, I'm controlling power timing everything else at um, and just adding boost or subtracting boost but I always leave the, the base timing table alone flat that way it's not climbing going up doing weird stuff and then I'm trying to remove timing or add timing or trying to control boot it, it, just make it flat one one deal and then I do all power management stuff with uh, timing multipliers I guess you could say so um, now let's look at our data log here. So no timing, rich, you know, it's not gonna have any, make any power there. So dome pressure, let's see. Dome, nope. Oh, you might not be data logging dome pressure. I think you have to select that channel to data log. Uh, okay, let's see here. We just brought up here, our wastegate target is zero all the way through here. So I didn't send something to the program correctly. So we'll come in here and look. Wastegate boost control, RPM, wheel two. Yeah, if I turn that on. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, is it on a yellow output wire? Uh -huh. Well, it's all correct there. Correct there. So this is all correct. So it must something's not set up. Uh, all right. Well, this is one of those simple little things. We're going to. Uh, I'm going to figure out what's going on with this thing. Uh, it's uh, at six o'clock already, so we're going to uh, uh, just do a valve lash. So this is brand new. That is, you know, second, third hit on it, all on uh, wastegate. So we're going to uh, lash it up, make sure everything all looks cool. Everything's like a million bucks in the morning, and then start running this thing. I'm gonna call it. I already know what it is. What? It's the dome pressure sensor. Is I don't remember setting the dome pressure sensor up on there. You're more than welcome to chase your tail for the next I'm not gonna two chase, weeks on I'm it. I'm not going to chase my freaking tail on it. I was going to go look for a dump brush or something. <laughs> All right, you got it. All right, now you're in dining room number two because over here is still the single turbo SMX. Dining room number two here has the Pro Charger once. Uh, we're going to go back and forth so you see this thing. But this is a 540 cubic inch SMX. Keep in mind, street car engine drives anywhere water cool see that said pronounced it water water cool so it's water cooled fully water jacketed uh but my smx package all right so keep in mind this is not maximum effort pro modified uh 10 pass engine kind of thing this is needs to drive a couple thousand miles okay so uh dual fuel this one's running on methanol uh, Pro Charger F4X140. I keep on saying 144, it's 140. I, I apologize. It's a uh, um, upgraded James. So this, this, this whole engine is for James Kolish and his Fox Body Mustang. Ironically enough, Jason Ware in England, Fox Body Mustang. Really pretty car there. 
Um, so anyways, obviously you're seeing uh, the differences and we're gonna be just trying to make a good safe base tune on this, good safe base tune on that. That one we had, we're having some problems with, you're seeing. And uh, so, let's get started. Okay, first hit, no nothing. No, that's just the bass tune. So just had to get the, got to get the dyno all happy and figure out how it, where it wants to start and all that other stuff. So that was reasonable. I think I'll need to lower my load settings down just a little bit. So let's see what that was at. So now synchronize scales. There we go. Cross the 52, 52. Uh, that's just me pulling back on throttle. Decent looking graph there. Low on power. Let's go in and see what our tune-up looks like. So that was just really short. Uh, 4,000 to 6,000 RPM. And I have a pretty slow gear set in it to start out with. Just not trying we're not trying to make a ton of horsepower with this i just have this availability to make more horsepower so well, i mean it's probably short on timing is about it let me mess around with the timing here but that's pretty interesting that uh dang it's gonna be it's gonna be hard to simulate I thought I'd like to try to get some kind of boost to boost curve from that engine with a with a single uh, big turbo to, to this uh, but this will always have a linear boost curve which makes it a little bit tougher to see and do it swept nice did its control nice Everything was really good through there, and uh, but it did. It made uh, 20 pounds of boost right there, and that is at I don't know, 1500 horsepower. 1522. 1522 at 20 pounds of boost. Uh, but I'll work on the tune up here because we can make that a little bit. We should be able to make that better for sure. It's pretty low time right through there. DJ, this is the OG mullet engine, OG big block. So he saw me fix all the, the welding, the sleeves, got the sleeves in, honed, we got the pistons uh, re, uh, or we got the pistons coated by line to line, and then got two new pistons for it. So all that stuff is great. And then obviously we're gonna put in a new set of rods. And so TJ's got this uh, ring gap, and now I said, hey, you need to put mock up a piston rod and put it all in here. Because we set it up to where it used to be clearing, and now it with a bigger connecting rod let me show you that hits there hits there hits there so we have to do a lot more clearancing on it let me show you why right there i stepped garrett up to the big even billy your bad boy connecting rod right here so this is i think they call this the the 3500 rod or something like that it's the pro modified a pro modified top alcohol rod so you can see here this was lasting great lasted garrett won three drag and drive events in a row went 640s or maybe even a 630 or something and all that something like that with the og big block uh, i know it went sure it went 640s uh on these rods uh, and then he had a problem i'm upgrading them to these
so this here is just on wastegate and so we're going to look at this close dismiss all right cancel how do you get that oh yes they close uh disregard some of these other ones these are trying to sort stuff out um so i mean that's 1400 and i only revved it up to 8000 right there uh, let's see our results table. So that is 1,400 horsepower at eight pounds of boost right there. So if we're only getting eight pounds of boost on the wastegate right there. And I've changed that spring. So it is entirely lazy. Like really lazy. Um, now in the and that kind of gets to be a problem on the on the engine dyno because I until I figure out a way of duplicating uh, I might try to figure that out I so you know when when cars are coming up and staging cars if if the car has no timing control at all and it just goes to uh, you know 4500 5000 rpm and it's not knocking out a whole bunch of timing, taking some fuel out or putting fuel in. Uh, a lot of times they'll do the exact same thing. It won't build any boost. So that's why the cars take a long time to stage. And then they three-step where they, you know, they change note. It's because they built up boost and then come back down in RPM for launch RPM. So I would figure we're, with these great big single like this, it's just really lazy. Um, so getting it to load in at that 5,000 RPM held it there for a little bit, but it wasn't going to go anywhere. Thing was only going to make two pounds of boost. I know it's at least got an eight pound spring and I thought it was a 12 pound spring. So, um, they only made, you know, two and a half pounds of boost right there. So we're going to have to, uh, obviously the thing should be making, you know, probably needs to be making about 10 pounds of boost right there so we just have to take a whole bunch of timing out of it to get it to do that and then I'm gonna see if there's a way I can figure out how to do that when you don't have timing controls and launch and trans brake buttons to set timers off and stuff it's a little little trickier there's probably a way to do it I'm gonna try to figure it out So that's a nice, safe, easy deal. Mm, yeah, so let's see here. Dog, what's the dogs? That's right. Don't like that one. <laughs> Idiot. Uh, let's see here. So, all right. Uh, so interesting to know. So I put in uh, three degrees of timing on this pole. I did end up going to higher RPM, just went to 7,000 versus six. And actually, it pulled back a little short. That's why it's zigzagged down there. And that is right in that here. Uh, we made 15.19 at 59 and. Yeah, so it's a hundred horsepower better in three degrees of timing. So, um, all in that general area, not uh, not super concerned about horsepower down there because typically in that exact range right down there, that's uh, that is power management area where you're working with the car. So. Uh, you're on the, let's say you're on the, uh, the two-step on trans brake at like 4,500 with this kind of motor, 4,500. When you let go of the trans brake button, the engine goes whoop, usually up to about 6,500, and then is accelerating from there. 
and that's the converter working that's just how the converters work in a fast car like that so um thereabouts plus or minus so um uh it's it really is never down here except to come up on the brake that's why it will do some tuning down there and then it really isn't here per se because it just drives right through it then you'd be making shifts at like 8,000, 8,500, drops down to 7,500 at, at most. So it, you know, it always lives up there in that higher range. So, but we're just tuning it through there, seeing where it's at. This, uh, let's see what it made. God darn it, it's still not actually. And I gotta figure out why it's not showing me boost right here. Now it is, there we go. Yeah, I think I was hitting the wrong button. There you go. 28 pounds of boost. Now this this engine is on methanol, so keep keep that in mind. Uh, the turbo motor over there is on E85. It's fairly comparable, possibly on methanol. That might the turbo motor that might make a little more horsepower than where it was at. Uh, and this is just I have this super safe. It would make a little more horsepower through here, but um, I Think we're going we're gonna rev this up here After I look at the data log and see what it makes and this is probably a really nice good safe spot of where he wants to be It's currently it's picking up uh, About 600 horsepower Sheesh is that right? Yeah, about 600 horsepower per thousand RPM. So that's pretty good, but pretty typical too. Um, and it's picking up eight pounds, almost 10 pounds of boost in a thousand RPM. Yeah, okay. Uh, but see why this is so much easier to control is it starts out with 12 pounds of boost, period, just regardless. So the engine is already there. It's already happy. The dyno is already loaded well. And when you hit hit the go button, it's already making power, it's already doing stuff, and it's just a linear line up. So it's just making power like that. That's easy to control. Over there on turbo motor, when the thing's going, and then, then gets all of a sudden happy, and the thing goes, like I said earlier. So let's look at some numbers. Here we're dying, you know, tuning with two different ECUs. This is Holly on this one. Fuel tech on that one. Um, like them both, tune them both, obviously. Can tune other stuff, I just choose not to. Um, lots, of, lots of other people do all that stuff. So let's look at the data log and see where we're at. This is a nice, smooth, uh, consistent uh, dyno pull, so I was happy about that. Uh, yeah, engine RPM looks good. Oh, starts getting a little lean up there. Oh, yeah. So it's throwing a whole boatload of fuel up there. That's why we do these shorter pulls to make sure we, I don't want to kill parts here. So it's right around this area, it's getting unhappy. So, you know, for the last half a second, it's uh, getting getting right lean up there. But yeah, it's throwing fuel at it everywhere here. So what we see here is uh, the this is the first part of that data log. So I got to just change my data log in parameters. This is where it... TPS goes up to wide open throttle and it shut it off because it only did a 30 second log. So I will go in there and make that correction. So I had it started back here and on one of my little rev ups, it I hit the, must have hit a throttle position or, let me hit it. Oh, right here. Yep. When I first started it, it started doing data log, so I didn't need to go change that parameter. Okay, so you saw on the, uh, that it was lean right there, so I was figuring out what was going on. So I went in, tested injectors. Uh, second set of injectors weren't working. Had to cycle power, turn on a water pump, because Holly is very particular uh, about, I have a battery charger that's always working on the, on the dyno. So, uh, and I was just getting ready to do it anyways, but I wanted to test the injectors and make sure everything was working, uh, is that, uh, if you go past 18.5-ish, somewhere in that range, voltage, it shuts the injector driver off. So you recycle power. Uh, so I shut off power, turn on the water pump, which lowers the voltage down to about 17. 
turn on the ignition power, go in test, click, 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 and it all clicks and works. So that should be taken care of this whole thing. Son, the time has come. Even though you're wearing the competition shirt, oh, oh, he's going to start his own channel, YouTube channel. A little different view of Steve Morris engines and stuff that just Kyle does on his own. So make sure that you like, subscribe. What's the name of your channel? It's Kyle Morris, my name. Or if you want to use the ad, the ad is at Motorsport Kyle. That's a YouTube channel? Yeah, just Kyle Morris. It's my name. Really? Yeah. All right. Well, there you go. It's just Kyle Morris. Super Nobody simple. had that already taken? Nope. Wow. Well, there you go. Go like, subscribe. Make sure you subscribe because that helps all the blah, blah, blah algorithms and all that other crap. That's right. And then, and then someday I'm going to give Kyle Steve Morris engine shirts so he can actually wear our shirts at the shop. I, I have to pay for them now. I don't even get ad costs. I got to pay retail for them. You gotta, yeah. Well, I'll give him a discount. All right. Thank you. about controlling uh, the, we gotta figure out what's going on there. I mean, it, when it takes off, man, it freaking takes off. It's like a, like a light switch. So, hmm. So fast right there, the dyno doesn't even want to catch it. So I gotta really think about that. How we're gonna do that. Um, hmm. It's kind of a, di a dyno low, dyno control operation. And it being lazy and not wanting to build boost. It still didn't want to build boost right down there at the bottom. Only made three and a half pounds of boost. I'm just going to dump all the time out. Now I'm just going to play with it and try figuring it out. You know, I made 15 pounds of boost up here. It just takes freaking off like crazy. It's got this weird little put it a spot at 6,000. I'm going to see what's going on there. It only does it on... didn't do it the first time. It's like perfectly nice well I guess maybe it did a little little spot right there I think it's transitioning into something so keep on looking building boosted off so that we'll come back and look at the graph I thought it would come right up in here and you know just go in this area let's look and see what the data log looked like there because I figured you do that in in the car and maybe the two maybe the two-step is helping but maybe it needs to just flat out be at more rpm if it does that is just terrible bad um, got to really think about that. That thing is really just holding steady right here. Now there, because then it doesn't have enough timing to make any power, so then it didn't want to come up on the on the uh, engine RPM. So. We gotta get more RPM there in order to well, in order to uh, hmm. that I can believe. I mean, probably wouldn't want to be at 3,500 
RPM probably just wouldn't make any boost and my car wouldn't. So uh, what you gotta do is you gotta get it to 52 or get it to 5,000 RPM and as soon as it's at 5,000 RPM it's gotta start dropping boost or dropping uh, timing to build boost. I mean I guess I can trick it into a trans brake function, maybe, and then I have to let go of that button and start to sweep all at the same time. And then it's different because typically in uh, in a car like this, what it would be doing is uh, you'd be on the two-step and then when you let go of the button the engine actually flashes very fast up to 6500 ish 7000 rpm that's where the converter grabs it and then it's so everything's all moving here on the dyno it won't do that it 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 can't do that so it's still going to be trying to load it at 5,000, which is then just going to knock the wind right back out of it as it dumps all the timing back in it. And actually, it doesn't have any power when it's trying to make, when it's got all the timing out of it. It's just building hot, hot, exhaust, hot exhaust temperature to uh, make the turbo spool. So, hmm. close to what it did before, 2203, 38, uh, 20, yeah, so it's definitely got a lot of fuel in it now, so it's probably quite rich, because it actually made 100 horsepower less right here, so at 6900 RPM, it made 2029 versus 2119, 20, so 90 horsepower less same boost obviously and so that is yeah it's probably just super rich up here now that's where i pulled short on oh and i can show you that third one right here so this is where we started with light blue this is where we were when it was leaner this is where it's at when it's got a whole bunch of fuel in it because the second set of injectors are on. So we can come over here, look at our data log. Yeah, now we have just, you know, minimal amount of correction. But for those boost levels, in fact, the correction's like really good. I mean, it's like spot on the money. But for where we're at, that is... Just a tick rich. Yeah, three, three, six in these. Now, how they go down the track and, you know, making horsepower and doing all sorts of that kind of stuff. So, I mean, that's at 8,500. And it just kind of lays over there a little bit. But it's because we don't, we're really short on timing. Timing's going down. Fuel's going up. It's just getting really rich and no timing. So, they'll tend to lay over like that. So, I think we'll, uh, uh, I know where I want it to be for timing regardless, and I think I'll just lean up the fuel a little bit here and we'll make another hit. And I think this particular pulley set is probably going to be done. So, uh, yeah, let me let me think how we're, how we're going to proceed on with this whole thing. Be right back. So what I've done here is you just saw 
Uh, this has been every single time that I'm trying to add boost to this thing. It is so lazy, it will not spool up. I'm really, I cannot get, I just flat out can't get it to spool up. So we're trying to time, you're trying everything. I, there, I don't think this is going to be a problem in the car. Uh, if it was, you know, that they, they have to change some hot side stuff to get it to, to be better. I mean, and you can tell this thing, uh, it builds boost fast. <laughs> I mean, it builds boost so fast and makes power so fast that the dyno, you got to keep in mind, there's a great big water tank upstairs, okay? And there's a great big water pump upstairs. So it is pumping water through this valve into the absorber and then the absorber has to spin it all around and has to load the engine and control it and then output the hot water. Uh, so this thing builds power so quickly, so fast that the dyno can't catch it. I've actually watched, or I've actually, you can see over here, I set up the tripod and I set my camera because like, I can't believe what is going on here. So I actually am videotaping the control valve. Well, the dyno control valve, I see the dyno control valve going to wide open, wide open, and it can't dump water and can't fill the brake fast enough to catch the engine. It's that fast. So I'm really struggling with that and trying to figure out how we're gonna do it. So what I've done here uh, on this last attempt is I'm not adding any dome pressure at all. I tried to throw a bunch of the wastegate spring pressure to it to see if it would be a little bit smooth because the one pull where we had uh, just a nice smooth pull there, I can't remember how much horsepower it made. 1400 or something like that? Sure. All right, yeah. We'll put it on screen. We'll put it on screen. Uh, I can't remember exactly what horsepower it made, but uh, it was nice and smooth and continuous. But it was still so god darn lazy. Oh, it made eight pounds boost. That's what it was. You know, it was so god darn lazy d down there, and then it finally made it up to eight and just kind of, kind of hovered there. So I thought, all right, let's shove some more wastegate spring pressure in it, see what it does. Uh, basically, you know, it's got a little bit better. And I thought, well, maybe I can do it more with the wastegate pressure, but it still just won't build up. So currently. I am trying a bunch of wastegate pressure just to see what it behaves like. I don't know, uh, but if it's not controlling well or not controlling the way I want it, I think we might end up just having to bail out on this as far as getting a single turbo tune for an engine or for the engine uh, that really isn't going to 100% simulate what's going to go on, on in the car because of the way the car drives and how the car works. Um, explain, you know, I've uh, been talking to you about that, about how the the car loads compared to the dyno, how uh, you know have it's on trans brake, it's on two step, but you know your timing, doing all this other stuff, and then it's just sitting there not trying to hold any horsepower, not trying to do anything. It's just actually maintaining RPM. The engine dyno can't do that, and again, it can't uh, simulate uh, instantaneous load. The car is instantaneous load because the car is just sitting there. Everything's all hooked up. You let go of the trans brake button and the car is there. Boom. Here, you if we let go of some kind of trans brake button or you know, imagine that kind of thing, uh, the water is going, ah, where did I get it? And then it's trying to fill and empty and move valves and all this other stuff versus just driving a car forward through gear set. Okay? So hope that explains that a little bit better to you. But uh, a lot of this stuff I'm just thinking out loud right now because I'm just trying to figure out how I can make this thing work if I can make it work. Um, so uh, this is just on wastegate spring, a bunch more wastegate spring. We'll just kind of see how it reacts and what it does. And ultimately, uh, there's no sense spending days on the dyno trying to figure out how to make the dyno load and control an engine when that particular tune and all that stuff isn't, ex isn't what we're really hunting for. So I know the engine's right, everything looks really good right there. Um, in fact, we can't even run this in NA, but I've run these things in NA all the time. So uh, because of the turbo headers, uh, unless I turn it around, I don't want to get around. <laughs> That's more screwing around unnecessarily. Uh, unnecessarily, you know, beating on an engine that just doesn't need to be beat on and uh, trying to figure something out that's not related to the engine. So anyways, let's go out there and, and uh, try this thing again.
got up there. You can see how hot the exhaust got right there. And uh, I'm just really struggling with the dyno control. That's a cool bird, it's just not the way it controls. Uh, especially this especially this dyno, it's just not exactly the way it works. Because um, it doesn't do load over RPM. That's not the way this particular dyno works. Um, so, it is really struggling. I don't think I'm gonna be able to dyno this as well as I was hoping. I mean, we're just trying to di you know, diagnose the, the engine, make sure everything's right with the engine, which everything's fine with the engine. Makes great horsepower for, you know, per pound of boost. I mean, it's 1,755 horsepower at 14 pounds of boost. Looking at the graph here, so boost actually started going backwards a little bit. Yeah, the EGTs get way up there because there's, I mean, the timing's all right. The O2 is probably just a right at seven nine eight zero at only thirteen pounds of boost, so it doesn't have much. Just flat out doesn't have much uh, boost to it. But if I put dome pressure on it, it just is uncontrollably turns the light switch on and just takes off, goes away. So. Um, yeah, I think, unfortunately, I'm just, I don't think it's going to be this way in the car for Jason. I think it's going to be, I, I know it would be different. I just, this is why a lot of people don't dyno this stuff. <laughs> this is this is one reason I spend the next three days in another, you know, turbos and different hot side, cold sides, different stuff, trying to get it figured out. Uh, it's got a good safe base tune to it but it is just unhappy to uh the dyno is unhappy trying to control it just not not going to do it so i think unfortunately we're not going to get a really good clear comparison in between the supercharged version and the turbocharged version because i can't control that kind of turbo correctly I'll be thinking about it, and it's not like an Eddie. It's not like when it's in the car. When you're when you're in the car, uh, all of those things are there's this real steady rate. You let go of the trans brake, so like uh, you do, uh, the car is set amount of weight, set amount of gearing, set amount of everything, and the engine accelerates through it. This has the dyno is controlling and it's trying to do different things. And it's not really simple. So I think we're good. I think we're screwed on this one. So I'm gonna talk to Jason, tell him where we're at, and uh, I think we're just gonna have to be done. We'll go in and look at that because if you saw the steam that shot out of the back of the dyno, not the engine, um, I see water all effing over the place. So let's go in there and see what that's all about. This looks this looks great. Exact same pull. That is with leaning it up a little bit, adding two degrees of timing, and pushed up you know 300 horsepower. As I progress at it, I could we I can keep on leaning on it, and I can keep on getting it up there, keep on making a little more horsepower, a little more horsepower. Um, but it doesn't really do any good. This is this is the the number we were looking for for a good drag and drive because this is drag and drive for Fox for James's Fox body. Uh, I was gonna say a Fox body Camaro, but that'd be stupid. You can't find but <laughs> Fox cool. body Mustang. <laughs> and. Uh, Anyways, the uh, so that's going to be great, and then we're actually going to be detuning this, so we're going to put another gear set in it to try making less boost. So everything that this thing's all geared for is uh, uh, it will run higher RPM. It will make um, 
we can continue to make more and more horsepower with it. Uh, more and more. I mean, it goes off the scale up here, so. Let's see, there we go. And. Oh, it probably still gets a little rich right through here. But that is. Oh, God darn it. There we go. Okay. So, actually, I mean, it's still basically climbing. I, and this will run, you know, typically out to 9,000 RPM. Um, and still be in that, probably in that 26, 50-ish range, exactly where it's at. And tuned up, it'll it'll be gal darn close to, gal darn close to 3,000. Now, on, on this particular blower, we are nowhere near the sweet spot on everything, okay? Uh, this is the big blower. This gives more room to upgrade. We can spin it faster, spin the engine faster, do all these other things. But that's all stuff that we have a really nice, good base tune here. Figuring out and beating up the engine to get no different than anything else. Figuring out the engine. I used to spend a lot more time doing this where, no, let's get the big number. You know what? The big number doesn't mean anything because everybody dis disputes the big number. But just see how fast stuff goes, right? Um, so... Uh, I'm happy with everything that's there. That's that's great right now, um, and it's good, safe, uh, easy setup, room to grow on tune-up stuff so you can figure that out in the car. And then uh, as it's going down track, and uh, there we have, you know, it makes 1,736 foot-pounds of torque, you know, at eight, what is, what RPM is that? At, you know, 7,500 RPM is where peak torque is at. Um, so this is in a really good sweet spot. Um, it will make more horsepower, uh, undoubtedly, so no big deal there. Um, yeah, you can see right here, this is, this right here is a difference of 2590, let's just say, let's just say 2600, 2600 horsepower to We'll round that off 2200. That is 400 horsepower improvement with a couple of air fuel ratio points and a couple of degrees of timing. The stuff is gets really, really good. That's why it will make more horsepower. I used to, like I said, I used to lean on the stuff and get bigger horsepower numbers because I was leaning on it. Don't care no more. Uh, engine's great. It will make horsepower. Everything's awesome right there. Uh, sort this thing out on track. No big deal. But we're going to go in figure out also what's going on with the dyno since it just blew that out so that might be a little bit problematic and uh well let's go in there and look at it oh yeah no big deal just blew the hose off all right not that big a deal uh blew off right at the end and you see it actually did just blow the hose off so that's kind of interesting cool good um obviously just put that back on and uh double check and figure out where we're at i think probably put clamps on the on the rest of them too that's cool i think we'll be able to now shoot in here detune and uh change gear set on this thing and go back down uh, to more like a beginner setup Oh, shoot, sorry, forgot to show you how many pounds of boost it made. There's Cody photobombing. And, uh, but anyways, 2590, 8,000 RPM, uh, 41 pounds of boost. And then, unfortunately, actually it's kind of funny, but I think it would have been pretty close to laying over there because I have some timing coming out of it and going rich again after 8,000 uh, RPM. But the data logger on the Holly shows that it actually went up to 8,600 RPM on that pole. It just stopped collecting data at 8,000. I forgot to change that. And it's looking pretty good right through there. Actually, it's looking really good. It makes 45 pounds of boost at 8,700, actually. 8,750. Uh, 8,800. Dang. Yeah. Went to 8800 but didn't collect that data. Uh, so right through there. But I don't think it would have made much, maybe 26. It, it was still climbing a little bit right there. I mean, it's it's starting to roll over. It maybe would have made like 2625 or something like that at 8500 RPM. Uh, like I said, it will go uh, 
I would probably, I don't think it's going to need to go uh, 9,000 RPM. It can. Uh, I don't think it needs to. Uh, so anyways, back to it. I got Cody in there. We're just going to change the gear set because we want to have a really low beginner uh, sort the car out, you know, handle all that kind of stuff, tune up for it without just taking a whole bunch of timing and fuel and it will actually just lower the boost quite a bit. All right, so this is the gear drive and the gear set that's in here. So obviously spinny faster, make you more boosty uh, and drive up horsepower loss. Um, so that's what it all looks like right there. So I'm just gonna figure out our, cause I can't remember what ratio I had in this. So this is, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, nine, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Fifteen. And oh, fifteen, twenty-four, there you go. So twenty-four divided by fifteen. Oh, that's got a one-six ratio in it. Okay. Alright. That's cool. I mean think about that. I got I have some other ratios over here, so let me go see what I got. 140 gear set here. And so my magic number is I'm just trying to make, you know, 2,000 horsepower uh, on a, that's all I'm really caring about. Uh, so it's on the same tune, not, not even a tune-up change. Literally just change the gear set and drive it. Don't do anything else. Nothing, okay? So... I'm going to, uh, yeah, so I think we can put this in there. So that would probably be, that should be a minimum of, minimum of 10 pounds of boost difference. So it should be right down in there. So lower the number ratio? Slower, it's lower. a slower pulley ratio, yeah. yeah. All right, so put this in there. Put the big one on the crankshaft. Otherwise, you're underdriving. I mean, I can try. <laughs> you can try. Well, it goes on either way, so. Right. Well, yeah, that's right. That's how that all holds on. So you just take the, the uh, what do they call that? Snap ring. Take that snap ring off there. Yep. Yeah. All right, cool. Yeah, let's swap that out. I cannot quit on this thing. It is, I've got to, I just have to beat this thing or at least do one more attempt at beating this thing. So we know that this is it's extremely lazy, does not want to spool up. So I have, and I was just thinking about it last night, it's like, screw it, I'm gonna try it. Uh, I have uh, E-Gates. So we're going to put a electronic wastegate and since this is just dyno, dyno stuff only, we're gonna put this electronic wastegate on here somewhere on the charge pipe. Actually, probably right there would probably be the best place for it. So we're gonna put this wastegate on it. So what the wastegate is gonna do and what it does do, people are already doing this. So there are, especially in Pro Modified, uh, people that are trying to, that literally just leave the turbo pin wide open throttle, but they need to, or you know, wide open maximum boost, whatever they can get out of it, they uh, they won't spool on the line. So they won't get turbo speed up. So they put these on there. So what this allows us to do is, this will dump off pressure here, i.e. drive pressure, so that uh, the uh, compressor doesn't have to compress, therefore it spins faster, won't make more boost, it's not, I don't think, that's what we're gonna find out. I don't think it's going to make, well, I don't know that. See, that's what I'm trying to figure out. 
is it's um, it, this absolutely for sure works in a car. I don't know if this was gonna absolutely for sure work on the dyno the way I want it to work, but it should open this up, it dumps off compressed air pressure, therein allowing the turbo to spin faster. If the turbo spins faster, it's moving air, and then if you close this, the turbo's already spinning, it should make a bunch more boost. Now, how that reacts to the dyno, don't know yet, thinking about it. But I'm gonna try it anyways because I just want to try this. I just got. I just want to do this. So I talked to Jason Ware. He he's appreciates that I'm trying to do more and trying to test more on. And this is all E85 non intercooler right now. So I'm not. I'm not trying to make max horsepower. I'm not trying to do any of those kind of things. I'm just trying to make something work. And if I figure this all out, Jason uses Fuel Tech, and this would actually be something the customer would use anyways. So I'm just. These are some of those things that I do to. Uh, help customers out even more more so and uh, to get I, um, sorry I get distracted <laughs> to get uh, to, just to help the customer out so I'm figuring out a lot of stuff for customers so they don't have to figure out the normal guy actually just sends it sends a engine out yep has oil pressure yep you know it runs and uh, yeah there you go you figure it out well I'm trying to help uh, so anyways uh, and he is going to be intercooled uh, at the at the in the car so he's gonna be e85 intercooled i don't set up the whole intercooler because it's just so much stuff and we're not that's not really the premise of what we're trying to do we're not trying to get as close to a perfect tune for the car as possible um we're just trying to get a good base tune of everything of numbers of how it works and what it's going to do and this is a good thing to try so this is really going to be interesting you've already seen how much boost this makes what it, it it will physically not make any more boost it won't rpm it won't do anything until it hits that magic sweet spot and then just freaking takes off, which means it gets to this point where the turbo speed is very slow, 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 and then it gets enough energy that it just goes wing and zips up. We're gonna try getting it to speed up first and then be more linear instead of like this, you know, like wow, that kind of boost curve is I want it to go wow, <laughs> you know, like wow instead of wow. Anyways. Uh, so we're gonna put this on. That's what I'm doing right now. Trying to get this thing knocked out pretty quick because I have to move over to this other engine uh, today for uh, James Colts. Now this thing is fairly ugly, but you gotta remember, pretty much for the most part, may not hang on to this thing for a while, but it'll probably just get thrown away. All the time. But this is what we do. With the 100, it's gonna be zero. Alrighty, so we got it on there. It's on the outside of the radius, so it should be in a good spot. Now this is the uh, typically an exhaust one. Turbo Smart does make aluminum one, lightweight ones that go, what they call the boost gate that goes on here. I don't have one, I just need to get this done right now. So this is perfectly fine. This would be a 60 millimeter versus their boost gate 50. Um, so uh, it's still control, controls, does everything exactly the same. So uh, should be good enough to do our testing. So now we're gonna wire it in and I'm gonna get with Fuel Tech on the phone and see if they can give me a little bit of hand uh, setting this up because they haven't set this up before in the software. Okay, so it turns out that you can't use a electronic wastegate. I just was off the phone with uh, uh, Fuel Tech, and they go, nope, the neutral position of the electronic wastegate is closed. 
and it opens when it makes boost. Well, I need it to be open to get the turbo spinning so I can then close it as it's making boost. And so he goes, well, I think, you, you know what? He goes, you could probably use a regular wastegate and take the spring out of it and then a, use a boost, uh, a boost output, boost activated output to close a Mac valve that would then put pressure back into there. And it's like, oh, wait a minute. Now I'm thinking about it. It's like, well, just for the sake of an experimentation, I have uh, springs in the wastegate and they won't even make up the wastegate pressure. Um, so why don't I use the boost controller on the wastegate and then I'll program it based over RPM. So at, for example, at 5,000 RPM, I'm not gonna have any pressure on here. There's no gate or no spring in here. So it is physically open. You can look down in there. It is physically open right now. And then as it increases RPM, then I'm going to apply dome pressure basically to it to close the wastegate. And because you can do this with a regular uh, blow off valve too, actually, if you took the spring out of it. But um, it's not gonna be exact, it's not gonna be perfect, but it is gonna be an experiment. And so what I did here too is I kind of bolted and taped on this uh, rag so we should see this thing shooting up like this uh, when it is speeding up the turbo. Now, don't do all this stuff on your, your car. Uh, don't put wastegates and stuff on there until you figure out, until you have uh, turbo speed sensors and because you can overspeed the turbo. If I left this thing open and just rev this thing all the way up and never closed this, it would overspeed the turbo. It just does. It doesn't have any restriction to go against, so it just freewheels up. It has all the drive pressure and just freewheels like crazy. So that's why we're going to close it. And so now I'm really curious to see if, if I put 10, end up putting 10 PSI dome pressure here, will it make 10 PSI boost pressure? Theoretically, I think it may. And it would be spinning the blower faster to do it, which in a short term application like this, it's not that big deal. Um, but anyways, just trying stuff. You still heard it just take off right there at the end. So let's see, we'll look at the data log, which will give us a little better uh, analogy here. You can see it really take off right through here. So obviously it doesn't have much boost, which it wouldn't have much boost, I would figure. Let's see where we're at here. Dodge. Okay, well, uh, huh. Yeah, I mean, makes uh, makes 1,200 horsepower at 4.8 pounds of boost, but um, all right, I'm gonna look at the video camera here, uh, Nate's camera, and see what everything was doing. And we'll look here. I just was trying that out. I think that the theory is is it still works. I bet you if. We'll see what the dome pressure actually was at. So let's take a look at it. And then in, in talking with the guys at Fuel Tech, they say, yeah, this these turbos are really hard to get spooled up. And when I can't apply the proper load and two-step and timing retard and everything, it's nearly impossible. And then I could probably, you know, hook up. We talked also about doing a, uh, putting a trans brake signal in it and a two-step signal in it. But then you're you're also then the dyno is sitting there 
not really knowing what to do because technically I don't even know if it would if it was just because you would free rev you basically would free rev on a on two step in a car it's up against a converter and the converter is constant it doesn't matter what you do the converter is constant if the motor's on a two step or whatever it's on it's constant this if it doesn't see load it doesn't apply load so I don't think it I don't think that would work either um, wastegate target I don't know that's interesting so my wastegate target was always zero why is my wastegate target is zero I must have got something wrong here it should be zero there but then it should be I should have had 15 pounds on it up here uh, Hmm. Oh, yeah, I got electronic blow-off control enabled. I turned something on that I probably didn't need to. It might be might be affecting me. Well, let's test the outputs here. And it should be able to see that dome pressure pop up. Let's put on here. A digital gauge. All right, now we'll come down here. You see, I put up this wastegate pressure. I think it worked. Uh, you can see the little turbo still spinning there. So you saw the rag was blowing up because it was leaking. It was sitting there. And then all of a sudden the rag shut. And then because the boost pre or boost pressure was going in there from, uh, from my uh, boost control. And then would start applying power to it. And then it made a nice, a really pretty nice uh, sweep right there so I'm really pretty happy with that let's see here all right now let's get off of here all right that is the best looking sweep I've seen yet all right so it wouldn't have any boost here that's fine uh, because what I'm doing is I'm programmed it to First, have it wouldn't see any boosts. Now, no, so I'm com I'm commanding 10 feet. Let's see what it did in the data logger. This is much more. At least I'll be able to monitor what the wastegate pressure was doing here. Um, so I mean, it built more boosts, and and what it would probably be is trying to figure out exactly what did what so ultimately right here and so that's it's still seeing the hmm, yeah it's still seeing the natural map of the turbo and the natural curve of the boost curve here it's all trying to manipulate it here but as we can see uh, let's see here. Bing, bing, bing. All right, that's the TPS. Where's my wastegate pressure? Yep. Yeah. All right, so wastegate pressure went up right here. So at 5,300, it had wastegate pressure of 12, so it spiked up a little bit, and target was 10, and but there it's still only making two pounds yeah well it's smoother it's a little more consistent but uh, I'm not gonna you're not gonna do any more than right there I mean it'd be what we're at now is at least I proved out that this I think in theory does work I think the turbo is spinning faster but it wasn't it still wasn't spinning fast enough to make big boost because the the boost level really didn't 
I, interestingly enough, didn't, like, jump or do anything weird. Huh. Well, uh, so we are back to, the engine is great. I think the turbo, I think everything's going to be fine in the car. You could end up doing this exact same thing or similar to it. Um, but the nature of and the way all of this all works on an engine dyno on a water brake absorber uh we're just not able to to test this correctly because it's going to keep on I, i'm going to spend another two days and another 25 pulls trying to figure out how to just get it to to, to test accurately so uh unfortunately i think we are yeah i think we're done but did learn something that's interesting. You saw exactly how it works. Exactly what it would do. Uh, I don't have a speed sensor on turbo. I'm sure the sped turbo had to be sp sped up somewhat faster because it's unrestricted. So it has to be, but I think it still doesn't have enough wheel speed in order to build, uh, to make boost. So anyways, you can see there that's, I mean, you can't, can't be unhappy with that. I mean, things that make all sorts of horsepower, that's, 1600 horsepower at 11 and a half pounds of boost and at least made a decent curve uh it is probably figurable outable but i can base my entire uh fuel map and everything and timing map off of this right here so uh, i'm not going to be doing anything other than beating this thing up so we're done on this one jason uh learn stuff interesting things never done that before uh, now it's t oh, and also no you can't do this on a centrifugal supercharger no you can't do it over there on that big f3r uh or i'm sorry f4r 140 144 what happens is this is a turbo you overspeed the turbo you can't overspeed a supercharger what are you doing with a supercharger you're allowing max uh, amount of air movement to go through it which drives your parasitic drive loss astronomically high it loads the blower so hard they have yes it would lower the boost yes it would probably control to a certain extent but it adds so much drive pressure to the blower they'll tend to break the blower don't want to break the blower in that case so uh, it is possible you could do it it is the wrong thing to do and it will break parts uh, blowers it is astronomically hard. It drives drives your horsepower loss on that blower up exponentially. So anyways, all right, let's go over to the other one. I forgot to hook up that hose on the back. Nate. Oh, oh me. Nate. Huh? The hose that blew off. Oh. Well, I guess we can't slow it down quite enough. I don't have the, an even slower gear set. So this is with the 140 gear set. Interesting. So let's get this on the same scale. There we go. All right. So blue line is uh, with the 160 gear set. Right there, 160. And the uh, teal line, or uh, I don't know, light blue line there, is with the 140 gear set. So I mean, it's definitely lower. I think what it needs is like a 120 gear set to try making that lower horsepower. If you do notice, it does it does want to carry out a little bit further. It would probably 
this gear set here would probably make just under it you know closer up to nine thousand it probably would make pretty close to hmm, 25 it's probably in a better spot in the map so I think we're just gonna leave this here because I don't actually even have another gear set so I have to talk to James on exactly what he wants to do with it. I can get him a different gear set it'll go back down but uh, as you're seeing here so this one we can look at real close here real quick and this tune or I'm sorry this pull will download the dad log was uh after we put the hose back on that nate left off the um i know see nate nate smile mm -hmm. yeah there were things right up there again 87 8800 rpm right there um yeah the, the, the blower actually blower comes alive right through that whole area too mm, that's interesting Look at the boost curve. So this line right here is the boost curve. Um, puts it in a little bit better spot. It's got some more timing right there. Uh, let's go down to 8,000. So 8,000 RPM. It's uh, 28 pounds of boost. So we'll just, yeah, 29 pounds of boost. So we're talking about compressor efficiency. This is the difference in between, well, this is one of the same things that is with a compressor map of a turbo and a compressor map of a centrical supercharger. So here's some of the differences in between a supercharger and turbocharger. Especially in a centrifugal supercharger, spinning it faster, making more boost, does not have a direct correlation of horsepower. If it makes this much horsepower and curve with uh, spinning at X speed, when we spin it Y speed, it does not mean it is like boom, like this. A lot of times what it is is more like this and then you spin it even faster yet and it's more like that okay that's it is not uh, it is not a direct correlation the centrifugals really do that because the harder you spin the blower the more air you move the more horsepower it takes to drive it the more inefficient it gets it gets into a bad part of the compressor map and if turbocharger does do the same exact the same thing just in a slightly different scale and you'll find a spot where the turbochargers usually just run out of air. I'm not really finding that the supercharger runs out of air. It just continues to drive the parasitic drive loss up. Now, that's my interpretation. Uh, I could be dead wrong, doubt it, but I could be dead wrong. Uh, Procharger could correct me on that. Uh, and the other thing you see on this particular blower is when we spin it really slow, that the, uh, it turn, it, makes a pretty steep boost curve here no, 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 no. It just, then it goes up really pretty quick okay now when we spin the blower faster look at the boost curve all right this is the one where it made you know uh 45 pounds at 8800 and made 40 pounds at 8000 rpm Look at the purple line is your boost curve. Let me get rid of some of this other stuff here. There, that purple line is your boost curve. Red line is engine RPM curve. Let's go back and look at this one. See if this will compare right. There you go. Now, look at the curve. It actually even starts out in it basically the same area down here, which is crazy. Very minimally more. Um, it is... The engine RPM is interesting how fast it makes it sweep, but this hit, this is spinning the blower slower. Whoop. This is spinning the blower faster. Very much more of a linear line. So that's really interesting. That's things with centrifugal supercharging of where it's at in the compressor map and how much. Uh, and then we see that reflected in the horsepower. Um, spinning it slower doesn't make absolutely huge numbers less. It actually just kind of gets in sweeter and sweeter spots. It takes less horsepower to drive it there than it did driving it with a big gear set. So, uh, for example, it, in my experience, I think that this blower at in that 160 gear set range right there takes about 500 horsepower to drive it. The turbocharger 
takes uh, maybe in back pressure type issues, maybe 100 horsepower to drive something, maybe. So, but this is this not slam against any, and pro chargers are slam against any centrifugals. That's just the way it is. That's just the math. Um, that's why they penalize turbo cars and give weight brakes to pro charger cars. But it's all class related and how they drive and what they do. There's a lot of benefits to the pro charger over turbo charger, i.e. a lot easier dyno. Uh, very consistent. You could leave off idle if you ever had to on this. Now you're leaving off idle on a turbo car. Um, you know, stuff like that. So just interesting stuff to know. We're gonna have to gear this thing down, but I am super happy with everything here. I already talked to James, he's super happy. So being able to detune it a couple hundred horsepower there, should be able to detune it a couple hundred horsepower more and get him into a really uh, interesting spot. And I would almost wonder if I had a gear set, if this, this whole curve kind of like moved over here and it was just real smooth and it never got to the point of efficiency where it really started taking off. That would be interesting. But I don't have a gear set, so we're not going to make that one happen. Um, anyways, like, subscribe. Uh, oh, don't forget Kyle's channel that we mentioned earlier. Go over there, like, subscribe to Kyle's channel. He's going to have cool stuff up. Different side of the shop than you see from me. So anyways, I'm Steve Morris. Have a great day.